Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and today I'm going to be talking you through seven wonderful picture books that I have read recently. Now, if you are new to my channel, then hello, welcome. I am Shelly, as I mentioned, and I really love books and reading. And I love, I love children's picture books. I love when a picture book, the there is artistry on multiple levels. When the, there is beautiful artistry and a point of view and somebody who clearly knows what they're doing in terms of art um, for the person who is illustrating the picture books. I love when the writer has honed in on their craft and there is a lovely story to tell, that there is possibly incredible wordplay and that it can get, it's something I can get behind and get excited about. And I also really love when those two things work together. They have to work together for them to be a good worthwhile picture book. And so I have seven books that I think do both of those things. There's beautiful illustrations and a, a lovely grasp on the craft of writing, both displayed in each of these books. So let's just get started. The first book is The Mermaid and the Shoe by Casey Campbell. The Mermaid and the Shoe very much reads like a prequel to the story of The Little Mermaid. And I'm more referencing Disney's The Little Mermaid rather than The Little Mermaid written by Hans Christian Andersen. There is, it, it, it reads like that because there is indeed a little mermaid who has a bunch of sisters and a father. And she doesn't really feel like she's good at anything. And at this point in time, she hasn't discovered or have an obsession with the human world. And so in this book, in Casey Campbell's book, we realize or we come to see the tale in which a little mermaid finds something from um, above the ocean, from the human world on land. She finds a shoe and she goes on a quest to discover what it is and what it's supposed to do. And it's like her first interaction with the two-legged human creatures above, you know, on the shore, I suppose. So in this book, we get a curious and very adventuresome little mermaid who makes this first discovery and also discovers something about herself. What I really love about this book and what drew me to this book in particular is Casey Campbell, the author and illustrator. I have read two other works that Campbell has contributed to. The first being Lester's Dreadful Sweaters in which I own and I absolutely love. I have long admired Campbell's illustration techniques and his creation of characters. They for me are very memorable. And so when I saw The Little Mermaid on the cover, uh, she was very, you know, distinct to me. And I was like, hey, I know that illustrator. Campbell's also also has illustrated with um, for the book Flora and Ulysses, which was turned into a film. And in that, uh, Kate D. Camillo did the writing of the story and Campbell illustrated the book. And that is for ages, it's a chapter book. So it's for ages, I think more like eight to 10. Um, eight to ten year olds it's not a picture book um, so this is my second picture book and third book by Casey Campbell and it did not disappoint there I mean the characters are beautiful the color palette is incredible there's these rich murky dark uh, greens and teals and then all of a sudden you get this pop of red and of course the mermaid herself she is this like glowing alabaster and it also brings a contrast to the, the page beautiful beautiful illustrations and a really really sweet story the next book i just about screamed when i saw it because none other than jen campbell of the channel jen campbell here on youtube wrote the book and I stumbled upon this copy 
at random. I mean, I was looking at picture books to read and to enjoy for myself, not even for my children. And I noticed that Jen Campbell had, was the author of Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon. And I just about squealed when I realized on the back flap where we can read more about the author and the illustrator that it was none other than Arjun Campbell here on booktube and I was just so stinking excited. This is illustrated by Katie Harnett. It is a story in which Franklin wants to know where he comes from. He doesn't, he's been away from his family. Franklin the dragon has been away from his family for so long that he doesn't remember his origins and so he and Luna go on a quest to figure this out. And there, I, I have known that Jen Campbell, the author, um, is a, a lover of fairy tales and that she writes uh, poetry, but I didn't quite understand the playfulness of her writing and the delight of her wordplay until I read this book. The illustrations are very beautiful. It has this um, contrast of dark, green and orange. Um, Franklin is this beautiful deep green and Luna has this bright red hair um, which is orange on the page and it's just beautiful. In this book you'll get wordplay and just fun things like this. On their journey they find 20 yetis eating spaghetti, five vampires reading Shakespeare, two giants playing chess and poltergeists in fancy dress, elves playing volleyball, nymphs with skipping ropes, tiny pixies throwing frisbees under microscopes, tooth fairies in ice cream trucks, witches baking cherry pie, disco dancing unicorns on roller skates. Oh my! That right there will show you just the absolute whimsy and delight of Jen Campbell's wordplay, which is wonderful throughout the whole book. I'm so, so delighted to have gotten to read this book. Phenomenal. The next two, I started laughing at the library when I stumbled upon these. They are called Gaston and Antoinette. Two separate books, Gaston and Antoinette. And the illustrations got me laughing so hard. They're so silly. And I just just went bananas for these books. So they're the words, they're written by Kelly DiPuccio and they are illustrated by Christian Robinson. Both books are about, you know, Gaston is about fitting in and how you don't necessarily feel like you fit in, but maybe you fit in more than you realize. And Antoinette is about finding the thing that you're good at and um, finding your talent in the world. But mostly the books are just funny. They're funny. And I was like busting up laughing when I read them. <laughs> and the illustrations are so funny. They're so funny. Y'all like I, <laughs> I, I can't even because they just, they're just like, they are like, I don't know why. I just think they're funny. They're, they just get me. Um, and so the first page on Gaston is Mrs. Poodle admired her new pu puppies. Fifi, Fufu, Ooh La La, and Gaston. <laughs> like, it's so silly. I love it. The, the next page is, would you like to see them again? Fifi, Fufu, Ooh La La, and Gaston. <laughs> Perfectly precious, aren't they? I just laughed. I don't know why. Like there, this everything is just working together. But there is a je ne sais quoi. There is something that I cannot quite put into words. It is what is it? Ineffable? Isn't isn't that the word? It's there's something ineffable about these books. I just know that they work. They work and they're funny. And they gave me a really good laugh this afternoon. I think that they would make the perfect read aloud for any child um, and that there is just something that is so silly about the illustrations. I loved it so much. 
The next book is Flashlight by Matt Forrest Ezenwine, and it's illustrated by Fred Kohler. This tells the story of three friends hanging out on their fort at night, and they have a flashlight. And of course, because it's dark out, and in more of an adventurous way than a scary way, the friends explore by shining light on the things in the dark, and it really uh, it provokes um, or conjures up quite the imaginative experience. And what I loved is that it was, it's something that, you know, I've done at night, I've gone camping and, you know, you can only see where you point your flashlight. And so it, it did kind of um, bring up that memory for me personally, but I also just loved the playfulness of the poem in the book and the way that it worked with the illustrations. The poem reads like this and, and thus the picture book reads like this. Flashlight opens up the night, leads you past old post and rail along a long forgotten trail into woods no others dare for fear of what is waiting there. Shines a path where waters rush, reveals a hole in the underbrush. Casts a glow upon the wall down a dark and ancient hall as inky shadows rise and fall, dancing to no sounds at all. I think what I love about this is that it has a, the poem, the book itself has a beautiful rhythm. And so that's, it makes it very, very, very easy to read out loud. And there are just some books, there are some books and the poet knows it too, where the words actually feel good in the mouth. It's actually really nice to say the words in, in one's mouth and to say them aloud. It is a delight to say them aloud. I remember having this moment in college in which um, someone in the class commented on how Christina Rossetti's Goblin Market, it's one of those poems that you almost are, you almost, it's a compulsory thing want to read aloud because the words just have this rhythm to it and it's just so, um, just it, it, asks it begs to be read aloud and so you i read something like flashlight and it has that same feeling to it that it begs to be read aloud and there's isn't that something that's just so beautiful about language and literature and writing and so it really kind of brought that feeling up in me that this book begs to be read aloud and isn't that want isn't that what we want from our children's literature to read it aloud and share that joy with our children and why not read something that is just asking for it asking to be read aloud next up is the book that made me cry and it is i don't care by julie fogliano and it's illustrated by molly idol and Juana Martinez Neal. So this starts off with, and I'll actually start off by reading it. So it starts off with simple statements and it says, I really don't care what you think of my hair or my eyes or my toes or my nose. I really don't care what you think of my boots or if you don't like my clothes. I really don't care if you think that my singing is funny or whether my frog drawing looks like a bunny and so it goes on and what's so brilliant about this book is that it is a re it repeats itself and in the first iteration the illustrations are showing these two children that don't like each other it's sort of like i don't care i don't like you anyways that's how the book feels because of the illustrations and they're kind of looking over at each other with you know maybe not the nicest expressions and then as the book repeats it turns into a loving statement saying i don't i don't care if you don't like the things that i like um i love you anyways and it got me like it choked me up there's just something about the story that um that really spoke to me because, you know, perhaps it's because I am a parent myself and I, you know, I've been that child that can be a bit snarky. Um, but the message of like, you know, at first maybe you're protecting what you love and then you get to a place where you're sharing it and you're sharing it joyfully 
and that you draw people in because you have this sort of carefreeness about yourself and that was so great and then also turning it around because it's not just about yourself but when other people do that as well you know you're drawn to what they love even if it doesn't always match with what you love and that you love them anyways and isn't that just the sweetest message isn't that just the sweetest message anyways um i have read many julie Fog Fog fogliano books fogliano books and i have read um a lot of molly idol molly idol illustrated books and both are brilliant so um i was really delighted to see that they teamed up for this book that made me shed a tear next i'm gonna end with a book that i really think that i love the most i just loved it i loved it so much i loved it so much and it is the barnabas project by the fan brothers the fan brothers are a trio of brothers it is Terry, Eric, and Devin Fan. They're all artists, illustrators, writers in their own right, and they've done a bunch of um, projects together. I guess mostly it is Terry and Eric who are authors and illustrators, and they have done The Night Gardener, and then <laughs> Devin has, you know, um, joined this project. Their third brother has joined this project. So the, Barnab the Barnabas Project, the book itself, it reads like old school Pixar. So think Toy Story, think Finding Nemo, think Monsters Incorporated. It reads like that. If you are fans of any of those movies, this book will absolutely, absolutely delight you. And it is about Barnabas, who is a creature that lives underneath the city, with other creatures were like the discarded thing creatures that have gone wrong type thing um they are like the projects that have gone awry that don't quite work correctly and so they are living in isolation and in loneliness and one day barnabas decides after talking to the roach and let me tell you what the roach's name is let me go back to it pip the cockroach Pip the cockroach tells Barnabas and the other creatures in this holding cell place that uh, there is there is a big whole world out there for them to explore. And so Barnabas gets it into his mind that he wants to escape and he wants to live, see this world outside of his isolated existence. And so, of course, you know, then it turns into they are busting each other out of their cells and they have to escape and story ensues from there. And oh my goodness, what a delightful book. What a delightful book. Wow, it was just so precious and adventuresome and joyful. The illustrations are immaculate, absolute perfection. And I loved it. It looks like the, if the Fan Brothers are not working for Pixar yet, they ought to be because it just seems like they have the same kind of perfection with their character designs and with the world building that they, um, created at least in the Barnabas project um, in that is so aligned to that imaginative and joyful and playful um, idea that I often associate with Pixar and on top of that the story was strong the storytelling was strong the character the characterizations the way the characters were created were perfectly executed and oh my goodness I have not felt this delighted about a book in a very long time, and that's saying a lot. So The Barnabas Project was hugely successful for me. I would definitely recommend. Um, I know that they're more known for the book The Night Gardener, which is undoubtedly a good book, but I think The Barnabas Project is a better one. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, these are seven delightful books that I have read recently and I had to share them with you. So I hope in some ways this was helpful or enjoyable to watch. And yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.